on this computer. Okay. Sunday, TCL, eight, week, one, two, like end of week end one. Of the, end, of week. end of week one. Yeah, it's just week one, believe it or not. Week one. <laughs> um, Luke is here. Lily's here. We're waiting on Shadia. And Ali is coming down with a cold. Okay. So I guess, Andrew, do you want to do like a quick little round of intros? for? Um, sure. I mean, uh, Luca, we haven't met before. So um, I'm Andrew. I'm the, the founder of Collab Lab. Um, super excited that you were able to jump in for Marco. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really great. I know, I, you know, I kind of had you actually. Um, so Lily also wasn't here at the kickoff call last week. So Lily stepped in because we had a person drop out because uh, she, she thinks she might have COVID. So um, this is, uh, so uh, anyway, that's, that was, it's been a little bit of a, you know, a tumultuous start to the cohort, but now that the both of you are here, I think we're going to have a great time. It's going to be smooth sailing from here on. That's my feeling. So um, anyway, I'm super excited you could, you could join us, but uh, yeah. Um, Stacy, Adrian, Stacy. I'm Stacy. <laughs> I am one of the mentors. I was in the first cohort of Collab Lab as a participant when we were like kicking it off and seeing how to do it all. And I've worked alongside Andrew for the past however long now, a while now, to kind of like build the program um, and mentored lots of the cohorts. And I'm now here with cohort number eight, Adrian. Awesome. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, my name is Adrian. I'm an experienced director of engineering, engineering manager. I've been leading remote teams for the past three years, um, leading Python and JavaScript and DevOps engineering teams. And I am really excited to be mentoring this cohort. Um, super grateful to Andrew and Stacey for having me. Um, this is giving me purpose to my life in a dark time. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know y'all. And I did just want to say, um, you know, having, having managed teams for a while, um, I think it is a sign that this organization is very resilient that we were able to flex and take in new people the fact that we had somebody drop out and then well somebody not even be able to start because of an illness and then somebody drop out to pursue an opportunity these or the fact that somebody is sick today these are not bad things these are not bad things at all this is reality this is how it is in the real world people find opportunities they leave your team and it is a sign of a healthy and resilient team when your team is able to flex and adapt to that. So really, really honored to be here with this really intentional group of humans. We're going to do amazing stuff over the next seven weeks. Thanks, Adrian. <laughs> I, guess, I guess, Luca, like, maybe you should introduce yourself, the, sure. our mm -hmm. guest of honor. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm really, really happy to, to join uh, the program and join this amazing community um yeah me and andrew we had uh, quite some conversations uh past couple of months and um I, um I really really appreciate that i got this opportunity to join you all um yeah uh, just a little bit about myself i'm not talk a lot because i know uh, there is more important stuff to do but um yeah i am a um recent graduate from bootcamp, um, but I have a background um, in entrepreneurship. I was running my own company before I switched my career. Um, I also, um, in terms of my background, I studied finance, but then I started my, my own company, uh, which was in internet entertainment industry. And uh, finally in 2019, um, I um, switched my career and, uh, joined one of the boot camps. Um, I'm originally from country of Georgia. Um, however, I've been living in, in New York for past uh, eight years. So thank you so much for having me and uh, looking forward to this. Welcome. Awesome. So excited to have you. Lily. Hello, I'm Lily. Um, 
yeah, a little bit about myself. I also uh, went through a boot camp fairly recently, um, and it was not the best experience for me. Um, and so one of my uh, previous cohort mates from the boot camp actually went through um, <laughs> a collab lab in one of the earlier cohorts and then really recommended it to me like months ago. And then I guess recently finally got the message from Andrew that there was a spot open. So really excited to be here. Um, I live in San Francisco right now. I've lived out here for like five years now, um, originally from the Midwest. And prior to the boot camp, I was working in the tech industry, but more in like an ops and analytics role. Um, and kind of just through exposure with engineering teams, just was more and more interested in learning to program. So kind of decided to uh, make the career transition about last year, about a year ago. Um, so yeah, really excited to be here, excited to be working on like a real life project and have mentorship from like experienced engineers. Thank you, Lily. Okay, Shadjo, we, since you just got here, we're like, Luca's new, he's taking Marco's spot since he had to step out. So woo, welcome Luca. Um, and we're just doing like quick introductions before we happen to demos. Do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Sure. So I'm um, Shajia. I uh, my background is in journalism. I studied journalism, but I made a switch from journalism to programming um, three years ago or so, or something. Um, I've been working as a front-end web developer um, since, um, and I am really excited to be here. Perfect. Thank you so much, everybody, for going through introductions again, and welcome, Luca. Um, let's jump into demos. Andrew, you can stick around if you want, or... I want to see the demo. I want to see the demo. All right, let's see it. Lily, <laughs> kick us off. You can just uh, demo it locally if you want. Did you say me? Sorry, I coughed at the same time. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I might need some help because I just did the Git rebase, so I don't, I think my... Uh, Sure. Do get rebase dash dash abort. Okay. Good. And it said like kick everything back to where it was. Okay. And if, uh, hmm. I guess no rebase in progress. Let me just share my screen and see. If the... Okay. It looks like you're on your branch. Yeah, with no rebase okay. happening. So when you get in there, do you see everything that? Um, I thought there was supposed to be the read write component, which I'm not seeing. Oh, there is. Do yeah. get uh pop back over there. Make sure you're on the right branch. Okay, so get checkout MC dash ZL. Set up PB. Okay, now without Yes, try that. Cool. You might need an NPM install for this, maybe? Is there a new? Mm -hmm. there there should, did we blast everything away? Okay. Okay. I think she should be good to go because I just want her to demo just her work and not the rebased work. Yeah. Cool. But we'll see. Awesome. Um, Maybe I should pull up the issue that we were working on. Um, yeah, that'd be great. I didn't actually write any of the code from this week. It was all Marco, and then I was just kind of reviewing it. So I apologize if I um, butcher some things. But uh, the no worries. okay, so the issue that Marco and I were assigned was um, as a component. I want to be able to read from and write to the Firestore database. And as soon as this loads, oh, okay. <clears throat> cool. Um, so we basically wanted to add Firebase and React Firestore's dependencies, make sure that when you make a change in the Firestore database, it actually shows up in your app, and then also make a change in the app and make sure it shows up in the Firestore database. So in order to do that, um, basically initialized um, Firebase with some boilerplate that uh, Marco set up and then wrapped our app with the Firestore provider so that the entire app has access to it. <clears throat> and this was all in the index.js. And then the component that we worked on was called read write. Um, and it's just a basic functional component um, where we have access to the Firestore through props. Um, we're essentially um, 
we have a message that we want to add here, enter your message here, um, which is just our uh, controlled input in our form. Um, and then when you enter a message, it should just render in your list below. So testing, testing, and it renders. I'm not really sure why it's like out of order right now. I'm guessing it's because of the IDs associated with every message. Um, That's exactly right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so here's just the um, basic boilerplate for how to use Firestore, which was just according to the documentation. Um, so we have a collection called example, and then we're just adding the message with our entered value, which was um, being reset uh, using React hooks. Uh, use state. And then um, this I've actually never used personally before, but pretty cool. Um, it's just something that comes with Fire, um, Firebase where it renders a list of um, everything that's in your example collection. Um, and then it also comes with an is loading variable so that um, if is loading is true, then we're rendering loading. If not, then we would just render um, a div with some um, list elements where we're mapping through the data and then um, yeah the message is then displayed. So I think that was about it for our component. Um, yeah. Beautiful. I love this mm -hmm. so much and I love Fantastic. this demo specifically because a, I love that you told us like where you got the information from. Like you went to the documentation and that's where you got the information. I think that's so helpful for the rest of your team to know because they're gonna be working with these same things as well. And it's like, hopefully they'll remember now like, oh, Lily said they went to the documentation to find this. So it's like, I can go there too to find other things. And it was also like a super concise, coherent walkthrough of what's happening in the code um, that for me, I know makes me feel much more familiar with what's going on here. So excellent demo, thank you. And Luca for in the future weeks, that's like a beautiful example of how a demo should go. Like show us how it works in production, walk through the code. Um, it's something you'll want to work with your partner um, before the end of the week to kind of talk about like, okay, maybe you screen share and talk about this part and I'll screen share and talk about this part, but like, make sure you come to the Sunday sync with like an idea of how that demo goes so it can be nice and short and we can really get a good idea of what you built that week. So excellent work this week, Lily. Amazing. Uh, Shajia, do you want to demo your work? And yours is in production already, so you can just demo it in production. Um, if you just give me a second, I'll do that. No worries. Such a good walkthrough. I loved it. Oh, I also was realizing, oh, I didn't even talk about like what I do. I work as a front end engineer at Zapier remotely. Thumb. Also, I don't want to do any comparisons, but that was like a better demo walkthrough than some of the demos I've seen from developers with a decade of experience. Like, <laughs> I love it. So good. <laughs> Concise is the word. Concise and clear. That's the word. <laughs> exactly. Totally agree with that. Um, what is the. Um... The oh, line. um, go to the project brief, and this will be great to see. So, yeah, scroll all the way to the top. Oh, keep top going. Up, okay. Yeah, keep going all the way up to the file, to the files. Keep going right, oh, there. right there. Okay. So, Luca, the project brief has all the information about like how the program will run, and this um, area locations for things has like the production site and the database and all the things in the access to. When I meet with you to kind of do like an orientation early next week. Um, we'll walk through this basically so that you understand how the program works. But this is here for you if you want to read through it. Oh, the, this is the site she's on the website. Uh, but this is the um, live version of it. So basically what um, our um, project was um, to create two different, using React how to use two different um, sort of views where um, the user can see the list of items um, so the default page is going to be this. 
for the user will see the list. Right now, it just says list. Um, and the other one, um, I don't know how to, okay, there. And the other one is add item. So if you click on add item, you see the URL will update. Um, so will the information on the page. And um, this is a really um, light way um, to, um, uh, what do you say, to show that you have selected. So if you have selected it, the, this um, would be underlined, uh, which is really not, it, it is not really showing, like it's not that prominent. So we will update that. Um, once we know what are we doing with the styling, um, we will like make sure that it's more prominent that we have selected this right now. Like it's something really um, small, but um, this is what um, the application is doing. Let me walk through the code um, a little bit. Um, there. So, um, so we have basically um, an app.js file. We are using React Router to update the URL. Um, so the one thing that um, I've learned is that the list um a uh, component there's two components list and um, add item um so th they're very basic um the add item just returns a div with an add an item and list just returns a div with list this is pretty much pretty basic we export it and then we import it in the app.js file um they're basically um if we want our um path to be if it's just like a home page it will um give us the component like render list. And um, if it's add item, it will render add item. But one thing is that if you want um, the list to only be rendered when the path is um, just slash, you have to use exact. If you don't use that, then because this also has exact, um, this also had a slash in this. So, both list and add item will render at the same time and we don't want that that's something um i learned sort of and um this this is pretty much it amazing i don't know if, can i not hear people no we're all muted oh, okay i was like <laughs> Amazing work. Great oh job. my gosh. Another brilliant demo. Another super <laughs> concise, easy to follow demo where we learn things. What I love most about this is like that kind of little gotcha that you learned where it's like, this is, this is like a weird little quirk that you might run into if you start adding other routes and stuff. Those kinds of things are really excellent to bring up in a demo because again, chances are somebody's going to be reading through that and be like, how does this work? And you just gave a brilliant like example of how we could like run into a struggle and avoid it. So really, really, really great work. Um, oh, another thing that I love that you pointed out was that um, like the styling that you did was very minimal. And this is like something we'll touch on a million times over. But when you're approaching these issues, when you read it in GitHub and there's acceptance criteria, you want to stick as closely to that acceptance criteria as possible um, because it's all you need to do to complete the issue. So I love that like the acceptance criteria was like, be sure those, like you can tell which one is selected based on styling and you didn't go overboard with it because there's going to be time in the future where that might be completely wiped away because of new styling changes. So if you don't spend time like really refining that now, you're saving yourself work on doing it in the long run. So excellent work sticking to the acceptance criteria um, perfectly. A plus everyone. Second Any math. Yeah. Any uh, final thoughts on these demos and this brilliant work that was done on week <laughs> one? I, I loved it. A plus would, would demo again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drop it. off okay. and get some other things done, but um, well, well done. Welcome, Luca. We'll, uh, we'll see, you, see you all on Slack. See you. Yes, bye, Andrew. Bye. Okay, well, without further ado, I think Adrian is going to be presenting on code reviews. I am. Hey, y'all. I'm super excited to do this. I'm going to share my screen now. Oh, my goodness. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, I want to go to, let's see, should I probably, Stacey, should I share first and then hit the share or the 
present on Google Slides, do you think? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I will share my screen. There we go. Share. Okay. Can you all see my screen? It is a yep. Firefox window. Okay, cool. And then it's present. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. So now y'all just see a big pr presentation screen. Awesome. Actually, okay. We just mm -hmm. see, unless, it, yeah, I just see the slide in. Oh, yeah. Form. That's what it is. Okay. So I do need to stop sharing and then share this new window. Yep. Okay. Cool. Share screen. Now we're going to do this guy. All right. Now do y'all see the presentation? It's fantastic. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, this will not take long, but uh, so the reason we're doing this is, as Stacy said at the beginning, as you've read in the intro in the project brief, we alternate weeks where we do a learning module and we do um, a retro of our work together. And so this week is the week to do a learning module, and I signed myself up to talk about code reviews. Um, this presentation is adapted from um, official Collab Lab resources uh, with a couple of uh, additions from me. So Stacy, please feel free to pop in with anything clarifying since I inherited this deck um, and okay. made a few changes. So cool. Uh, so this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, what is a code review, the code review cycle, what specifically makes a code review a great code review, how you can help others review your code, how you can review others' code, what kind of uh, actual things you can do, but also the kinds of attitudes you can have around reviewing others' codes, and then um, exploring code in GitHub. So this is kind of the roadmap for our chat today. So let's first start with what is a code review. And I really love this word conversation. It is a conversation about a set of changes. Um, the situation for the code review is the technical team that you work on and the ways that you want to improve the product. And the way to get there is through writing code and talking about it and collaborating, um, getting clarity. It's a great place to share knowledge and learn from others as you are not only sharing the work that you've done, but you're also carefully reviewing the work that your teammates have done with intentionality and care. Um, it's also a collaborative, it's a collaboration place. Um, you're sharing, you're asking questions. And I think when you think about who it helps and how it helps, it helps you improve as a developer because you have to flex your communication skills, your collaboration skills. You have to find effective ways to talk about your work. And as we both saw in the demo, as we all saw in both of the demos this morning, a concise and compelling way, clear way. I mean, the, the three C's. Y'all, y'all were, y'all were there today. I love it. Um, but it also helps your team, right? It helps your team decentralize knowledge. Um, you heard me talk at the beginning about how resilient teams, healthy teams, are teams that can respond to things like somebody being out sick or somebody going to take another great gig. Uh, when you decentralize that knowledge and you put it out in a code review process, when you put it out in documentation, your team is less vulnerable to the effects of losing a person, having someone out, um, because you've decentralized that knowledge. You've got it out of one person's head and into a team infrastructure, and that's really awesome. That's what we want. Um, it also helps your team share responsibility. This is really important to me um, as somebody who's a fan of blameless postmortems, blameless incident reviews. Um, you can, it's not just one person feeling all of this responsibility and this weight of the world for the work. You're putting your work out there for review and so you're sharing that responsibility, right? I love that. Um, and then it also, of course, helps improve your code base quality. Um, Again, you're collaborating. There's more opportunities for more eyes. Um, sometimes in the course of reviewing a PR, you might see something that is, you know, not actually even really related to the work at hand, but through the process of, of running the code, you uncover something that else needs to be resolved. And so you, you create a JIRA ticket, you uh, uh, file an issue for it, and it improves your code base quality all around. Um, in addition to the new changes that you're introducing. So that's kind of a high level what is. We'll have time for a conversation at the end too. 
So the code review cycle, um, quickly, super high level, 10,000 feet, you're gonna open a pull request, uh, receive request and receive feedback on that pull request respond to the feedback by making any changes. And then you see that diagram is going back because you're going to request and feedback and request and receive feedback once again. Once you've received that final yay, you're gonna merge it. You're gonna hit that big green button and that always feels real, real good. Um, on, at the Collab Lab in particular, we have the, the two tiers of approval. Um, because we're collaboration focused um, and because you are working together in your teams and as a co cohort, you're working together as a cohort to create a product together, you are initially requesting that review from the other team. And I think that's really, really awesome the way Stacey and Andrew set that up. And then you're having a second round of review from a mentor, me or Stacy in this cohort, to give that final thumbs up before you can hit that, that merge button. Um, so that is specific to here. Um, different software teams will have different conventions and rules. Um, they may have like a CI CD step that needs to be completed before you can do that. They may have a test suite that needs to be run, but this is the basic outline. So what makes a code review a great code review. I love this first thing that is lifted up. <laughs> Don't focus on stylistic changes like you miss a semicolon here, add a space there, uh, tabs versus spaces war come into play there, um, camel cases and you know concerns about cases. I, I heard something at an OSCON uh, about five years ago, which is as much as, uh, or actually it might have been a DjangoCon, um, but it was, a, it was a technical conference that also had a strong focus on how we work together and how we treat each other as humans. And they advised anything that you can get a robot to do for you, try to do that. So if you know your linter is going to catch it, your prettier, your ESLint, your type checkers, don't don't waste your wonderful life essence <laughs> bringing that up to your co to your colleague. Um, let the tools do that. Don't focus on those stylistic changes. Um, instead, focus on more of the things of substance that you uniquely bring to the table um, that that cannot be provided by a robot. Um, Number two, and I'm going to actually highlight this one on the next slide, so I'll go over it pretty quickly. Try out the feature locally slash in a test environment. Number three, another way you can think of uh, what makes a, a code review a great code review. Will you understand this code a month from now? Um, do you have it either in the description, in the PR, or in your own working through it and testing it out, um, and in the documentation and the, the way it's been set up and organized, are you going to be able to help your future self, always acting with the, your, your future self in, in, um, in mind? Praise, give praise in a code review. It takes so little effort to give a thumbs up, to use an emoji, um, to highlight what you learned or liked about the PR. Um, it's not just a place to be critical, even if you are being gentle, it is also a place to praise and lift up. And I think we see with Stacy modeling that um, after both of the demos today, like what did she love about it? It always makes people feel good to hear what went well. Um, default to approval. Um, that is more of a mindset. You're all on the same team. You're wanting to help each other. It's less that you, um, it's, it's more about approaching it with like an open heart and an open mind than just like a, I'm going to say no to this or everything that comes across my desk, I'm going to look at with like a really severe eye. Um, you want to assume that the person really put their best into this. And if, there is question about the work. Um, try to try to approach that gently and kindly, and get more information rather than approaching it with a spirit of judgment. Um, not, for example, I can't believe they made this choice. I would never have done that. But more curiosity of, I wonder why they made that choice. I bet there was a good reason. <laughs> I bet they were doing the best they could with what they had at the time. I want to find out more about that. 
it's new for me. I've never seen it before, but uh, let's default to asking questions, understanding, um, and, and seeking to approve and grow together than no, 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 no. Um, and that, that goes with the next point, be kind and empathetic. You help others understand your changes. Um, if somebody does ask questions on the PR, which they hope we hope that you will, and that there will be spirited conversation, you will answer them to the best of your ability. And take your time. Um, be thorough. Uh, another great thing that I heard, um, it, and I, I actually have lived by since my days as a developer, which is as developers, we spend way more time reading code than we do writing it. And that is the truth. I have seen that proved time and time again over the years. So if you feel like, oh, I need to be writing, I need to be creating, I need to be doing, please know that the reading and the reviewing is a huge part of your doing and it is just as valuable. So I want to go real quick and highlight number two, try out the feature locally slash in a test environment because this one is important to me. Run the code, run the jewels, run the code. Although the new run the jewels album is really good. Um, I want to highlight this one because running the code gives you confidence as you are reviewing. If you have the ability to pull it down, test it locally, run it in a test environment, it will help you find things that you would not find um, from just the skim, from just reading the code. And I want to lift it up and say that while I primarily see this among managers, I have certainly seen this in senior engineers as well, um, where they will get a request for review and they will literally just go into GitHub and they will read the files and they will say LGTM, which stands for looks good to me, give it a thumbs up and they will press approve. And this is not really healthy behavior because there's a lot of there that it can very easily become overconfidence, hubris, I look, I know y'all are busy. I know there's a lot going on, but you're not helping your team if you are not really taking the time to try to pull it down, read it, really see what's happening. Um, so, so do that. Do run the code. Do test it out. Do see if it makes sense to you. Um, resist that urge to rubber stamp it, to LGTM it. If you see that behavior on teams that you work with, uh, present, future, um, gently call that out. Get with your manager and say like, hey, I don't feel like I'm getting a real thorough review on this. Um, I don't think you'll have any issues. And so I just wanted to share a very short anecdote from this week from my life. Um, I had a, a pretty big personal tragedy happen in my life this week and I was not able, I had some issues with my local development environment here at home, my laptop, I'm, I'm switching laptops and I'm not totally set up um, with, with everything yet. And I had allocated some time at the beginning of the week and then I just lost all the time I had planned. So we're gonna try again tomorrow and this week. All that is to say is I wasn't able to test y'all's code out. And since I kind of set that rule as myself and I advocate that, I, was happy when Stacy did the reviews because I knew that she could do a thorough review that I couldn't do. There was no way I was going to preach and not practice what I preached this week. So, um, so I did not, I, I was very tempted. I will say personally, I was tempted to just get in there and be like, Oh, I'm sure I can figure it out just from reading. I used to write JavaScript for pay. I used to write react for money. People used to pay me to do this. I could, do no, I did not do it. So I urge you to do the same. So the other thing I want to say is the way you can help your team is your PR can include instructions on how to run the code depending on the team you work on. I have found that to be immensely helpful in the past on software engineering teams where I've worked as an engineer. That has been part of our template. When you open a PR, you say how to run it. Um, that may be something that we end up doing here, adopting as part of our practice, but you may see that and I wanted to say that can be helpful. And if you are asked to review a PR and you are not sure how, that's a great learning opportunity. That's a great place to ask questions. Say, look, I want to help. I, I, I can write code. I'm, I want to learn how to review it. I'm not sure how to pull it down. That's a great place to ask, you know, and, and learn how to do that. 
So how can you help others review your code? Add that meaningful PR description, write meaningful commit messages as you are committing your code. Do a self review. You don't have to spend a lot of time on this, but explain why you did what you did. You're going to know a lot closer now that you're closer to the work. You're going to, it's, you're going to be a lot more clear on how you made the choices that you did and why than you are in a couple weeks. So take this opportunity now to explain why you did what you did um, and ask questions. Um, even if you're the one creating the PR and, and really kind of try to test yourself first. Um, use the screen capturing tool, tools that Stacey has mentioned before. Um, got a couple links here that you can create short snippets to show how you walk through. Um, and then you can explore, these are some, um, some diagrams of how you can explore the code in GitHub. You can explore commit by commit. Now GitHub does make changes and, and the next two, this screen and the next one, I'm not as up to date on, um, but these are just a couple places you can look. You can look in the files change. You can navigate with that previous and next menu. You can select certain commits and take a look at them. Um, and you do, really just when you're on the PR, click around. If it's clickable, click it and see what it does. Um, same thing on the next one. You can mark your reviewed files as viewed. So again, click around, see what options are available to you, um, and use them in the spirit of transparency and visibility about what you're doing. Um, we got a couple resources here. Here is a short lightning talk um, about effective code reviews. Um, lightning talks are called lightning talks because they're short. So this one is, is worth taking a few minutes or typically under 10 minutes. And then another one I wanted to lift up, I saw a few years ago, Amanda Sopkin is a senior software engineer um, who I met a few years ago at Self Conference in Detroit. She gave a great really great talk on code reviews called the good the bad and the ugly um, and i've got this slide deck linked to here um, i think we will share these slides and if if we don't share the slides we'll definitely share the the links um, so that you can go check that out unfortunately that talk hasn't been recorded but the slides are still really useful i know a lot of the times the slides from slide decks from talks are not always the most useful um, but hers actually are quite good um, so i encourage you to check that one out and then we also have a few other links here for further reading um, so yeah thanks thanks for the opportunity to present today i hope that was helpful this was amazing okay i just want to touch on a few things here code reviews can be really hard and really intimidating, I know, from firsthand experience. And a lot of times you're like, like I'll get tagged into code review things by these brilliant developers and I look at it and I'm like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> what? And you're like, I don't know what I don't know. So you feel like nervous to code review, like you don't know what the heck you're doing there. So I think that's a brilliant time, like Adrian was saying, to just ask questions, like find something in the review or like in the PR that you don't fully understand and just ask like can you tell me more about this and not only is it good for you because you're going to learn but it's good for the person who wrote the code to help make sure that you know they've created the documentation that they need to make sure it's understandable they've wrote written clean code that again they're going to understand in a few months when they go back to it um, and really helps just like again like decentralize that information like Adrian was saying I also want to screen share real quick to show you share a couple things we had talked about um doing a self-review and that's always the first thing that i do when i create a pr so you create your pr like this right and the first step i always take is to go in here and look at my files changed and then i'm going to go through here and any line of code that i think is interesting and a good example is um in this one in the router one where we learned about what exact will do I'll go in here and I'll be like, oh, this is worth mentioning for somebody who's looking at this code because they're probably gonna be like, what does exact do? So I pop in here and be like, this is here because X, Y, Z. And so that the next very first person coming in to review the code has like better context about like what exactly this code is doing and what are some of the struggles you face. Not only that, but this is gonna live on forever. So when your team comes back in the future to see why you made certain decisions, they're gonna see these comments alongside that. Another thing that I wanted to point out um, when we were talking about like run the code, make sure the code works. 
Um, one way to do that is pulling it down locally, NPM installing it to make sure your dependencies are up to date, starting your server, um, just like you would if you were doing your own development. But another thing that's really handy that we have is we're using Netlify, Netlif, I can never say that, Netlify to deploy this. And so we have this deploy preview where you can go in and click around and see what this will look like when it gets merged to master, make sure it works. Um, this one we rebase, we're gonna fix it later. So it looks a little wacky, but again, if you can't pull it down locally for whatever reason, this is an option that you have at Collab Lab as well. And probably on whatever software teams you join in the future. Um, let me stop my screen share. But yes, code reviews, a brilliant time to learn, a brilliant time to understand what's happening with the app at large that you're all working on together. Um, how did code reviews go for all of you the first week of doing them here? Any thoughts? I thought it was super helpful. Um, I learned some new things too with like the tooling that you mentioned with accessibility, how to test your apps for accessibility. So yeah, it was really great. Love that tool. Shaji, had any <clears throat> thoughts? Don't, you don't have to share if you don't want. No, I, I, I agree. Uh, but Lily, I actually really like the extension you mentioned. I did not know about it before. In the beginning, it was like a, I did not understand how to use it and what the error message was. Um, but uh, they had some um, links attached to it, so it was like good um, to see what I was doing wrong. But yeah, it was really good. Thank you for that. I love it. I love seeing you all like contributing to the code reviews. Amazing work. Okay, great. Code reviews, we're gonna keep doing them. If you have questions about how to do them better, just let us know, we'll help coach you through that. But just use it as a learning opportunity, a time to ask questions and a time to make sure that what's going into your app is solid and does what it should do because we're a team and we're all building the app together. Okay, before we jump into our breakout rooms, Michelle is here. Michelle is amazing. She's one of our code of conduct responders. We take our code of conduct very seriously at Collab Lab um, and are professionally trained on it. So um, we, she's our representative for this cohort for the code of conduct and we wanted her to just come introduce herself. So Michelle. Hello, I'm Michelle. I'm yet another one of the people from Zapier here. Uh, I'm a customer champion there. And like Stacy said, I'll be your code of conduct person. So if you have any issues or concerns, feel free to come to me. Everything's confidential. Um, you can reach me by email. I'll drop it in Slack or obviously Slack too. So yeah, I'll check in with you guys at about midway through the program again, just to see how things are going. Um, and then one more time at the end. So nice to meet you. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, mm -hmm. we like, we're really passionate about creating a safe space for everybody, a space where everybody can grow and learn and be heard and contribute in a meaningful way. And so um, by, by giving you access to like your very own code of conduct responder that you can be, you know, transparent with and share any comments, questions or concerns you have helps us refine that program so that we can make sure we're continuing to build like an amazing program that everybody wants to be part of. And is happy to come to and loves contributing to. So thank you, Michelle, you the mm -hmm. best. Okay, so let me share my screen again and we will go over what we're gonna work on next week. Screen share, this one again. Okay, so I'm gonna go into, and Luca, this is how you get to the issues board. You go into the projects on your repo and we have the smart shopping list project here. So we know that the routing one has been reviewed, it's been approved, product owner approved it, and that one is merged, I believe, right? That's right, yeah, I think so. Um, the Firestore one has been approved. We're gonna put it in product owner approval because we still need to make sure that that UI gets sorted out and got a little wonky during the rebase. So, um, after this call, before the end of Sunday, we'll work together. Um, Lily, since you're on that ticket, you'll be like the leader of that initiative. But if you want help, like I'm more than happy to pair with you. I'm sure anybody else in the cohort would love to pair with you as well, because um, we're a team. And, oops, I did not mean to go back. Next week, it looks like these are the two issues we're gonna be working on, because they go in order. Issue number three. 
as a user, I want to set up a new shopping list so that I can track purchased item. And issue number four, as a user, I want to add a new item to my shopping list. So both of these um, are pretty like database centric. You're going to be working with Firestore. Um, do either of these jump out to anybody? Does anybody want to claim either one of these? If not, I'm just going to assign them in order. Um, but if you see one that you're like, oh yeah, that one's great. I've worked on that before. I want to do it again or whatever it might be. Um, sure. the, the Firebase issue that Marco and I worked on, since it was kind of like adding a message to that list, is this kind of mm -hmm. similar to that? Like, could we just repurpose that to? Yeah, totally. So this, that one will be probably closest to this. I want to add a new item to my shopping list. Um, when you do that, there'll be a couple of other things that you'll need to do. You've got the name of the item down pretty well because you can add a name right now, but you'll also want to add how, how soon are you likely to buy that item again? Because what the Apple II is, it'll calculate that going forward and tell you which items you're going to need to buy um, sooner rather than later. So this very much butts up against that one. If you want to take this one and add those additional pieces to the feature. Yeah, I'm going for that. Cool. Okay, so if you look in Slack, let me pull it over. Um, every week, I'll just go ahead and create, and we talked about this a little last week, but for Luca, I'll create these pairing bots where these pairing threads, I don't know, it's like bots, where you can like coordinate when you're going to pair with your partner in them. So um, let's see. Okay, Lily and Shakia are going to take number four. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that here. Oops, not to me. Hey. I don't like how it does that. It's so easy. I don't either. And it's also when you're reviewing a PR, it's so it's, it's so easy to accept the um the suggestion rather mm -hmm. than just like yeah, you're like, no, I appreciate that you auto suggested, but that's not who I wanted at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And let's see. Oh, God, why did I do that again? We just talked about this, Stacey. Come on. All right. And this one's going to be Allie. Oops. Allie and Luca are going to be working on this one. So I'm going to move both of those over into in progress when um, going forward, you all can continue moving these down the project board as they make it into the next stage of the process. But now what we'll do is we'll go into breakout rooms. Do either one of the, do you want either one of these? Adrian, does it matter to you? Mm. Yeah, I will go with um, I will go with Lily and Shajia. Okay. So let me stop my screen share so I can see your faces. Hi. Um, okay, I'm gonna send us into breakout rooms. We will talk over the issue. Just make sure we're getting things um, set off on the right path. Lily's gonna head making sure that final PR gets merged. If you need help, like I'm around all day, just let me know and I'll pair with you. Um, and that'll be it for our Sunday sync. And then we'll just start pairing next week and getting the second round of issues taken care of. Does anybody have any questions before I shoot us into breakout rooms? I just wanted to say to the group, and I'll also put this in Slack, I am going to be unavailable on Tuesday. Um, so I'll be with you today. If you need me, I'll be around checking Slack tomorrow. I'll be around all day, but Tuesday I will not be available. Got it. No worries. Okay. Stacy. Okay. So Luca is going to be in a room with just me since Allie's here. And then in breakout room two, we've got Adrian. Lily. Shoshua. Okay. I'm going to send us into breakout rooms. Amazing work this week, team. Like brilliant, brilliant demos, very clean code good communication. Let's keep up the communication in Slack when PRs are ready to go. Like, don't feel like you're pestering people. It's a really hectic time, I think, for everybody in the world in life right now. Um, and so if you need to like tag people multiple times to get their eyes on things, do it. I think we all understand that we're a little scatterbrained. So we'll continue having grace and empathy for each other and working together as a team to build this out. Good. All right. I love you all. I'm sending you into breakout rooms. Ready, set, go. Hello. Oh, am I in here?
Can you see me or hear me? Mm, I'm gonna leave the room and try and come back because I can't see or hear anything. We break out. Okay, breakout rooms. Join. Yes. Hey. Okay. Hi, Susan. Sorry, it wasn't working for me for some reason. Okay. Yes. So, just me and you. Ali has a sore throat, so she's gonna watch the replay of this. So it's perfect that we're in here and recording on this end. Um, so the way that this will work, and again, we'll do like a quick orientation tomorrow if you're available, but. You'll be paired up with Ali this week to work on this one issue, and you'll largely solve the issue by pair programming together, kind of like this. Like you'll get on Zoom and you'll look at the issue together and you'll actually write code together and push it up to this remote um, branch that you're both working on. But what we'll do in this breakout room is I'll share my screen with you and we'll just make sure that the issue makes sense and we'll kind of set up a plan for how we might tackle the high level. Sure. Let's see. This is you here. And so throughout the week, um, you know, you're welcome to communicate, like coordinate with Ali and Slack and talk through the issue and how you're gonna solve it. But what we really recommend to do is like for like kind of big discoveries or high level progress, tracking your notes and comments on the issue here. So let's go over the issue and kind of like talk about what that looks like. So as a user, I wanna set up a new shopping list so that I can track purchase items. Can you hear me okay? I feel like my headphones are being wacky. Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can. Cool. Okay, so a shopping list consists, consists of a set of items associated with a user's token. Creating a new list consists of the following. You'll generate a new unique token. You'll save the token to local storage, and you'll show the user the list view. So we have a script here that will generate random tokens for you. Do-do-do. And so this script, you'll need to take it and put it into the app so that you can call it from within the app to generate this random token. Then, okay, so the AC is, okay, so once you generate that token from a function inside the app or however you're gonna do it, you'll save it to local storage. Um, and then you'll show the user the list view that we just saw in the demos, how they're being routed to like, you know, our app slash like home, nothing, root is the list view. Okay, so the acceptance criteria is for users who do not already have a token or list, a button or a link um, needs to allow them to create a new one. So there needs to be some way for them to create a new list that again, will generate that token and store it to local storage. Um, clicking the button will do that, generate it and save it to local storage. And once the token's been created and saved, the user should be redirected to the list view. So just knowing that what do you think like your first steps would be in solving the problem mm -hmm. and it's okay uh, if it's just like just research more that's fine too yeah yeah um uh, i mean definitely i would need to kind of review um how to store um uh how, how to store a unique token in a local storage um okay Perfect, that's exactly what I would do as well. And this is like what I was saying before, like when you're, when you're coordinating on the issue, it's really good to like just leave your progress here and leave comments here. So this is where I'd recommend taking those notes. So the alley can come into and be like, okay, this is his high level plan. This is how I might change it or whatever. Okay, so review how to store things in local storage. What else? Like. Are there other unknowns or is there anything about this ticket that doesn't quite make sense or that you would need to dig into to more fully understand it? Um, the actual functionality is quite understandable. Um, I think um, more what I'm interested in is uh, if user needs to be logged in first to create um, a unique uh, token mm. in local storage uh, or yeah so the, the user won't need to be logged in for any reason just anybody should be able to go to the home url and click a button to generate a token mm. no one needs to be logged in or anything anyone should be able to access 
access app and generate a token by clicking a button or a link, whatever it might be. What else? Anything else? And it's totally okay if there's not. I know like for me, I'm like, I, I need to like sit with this. I need to read about it and research before I can like think about anything. But I just want to make sure like I'm here for you and for Allie if she's watching this and has questions. Um, totally here for you. But this seems um, like a good start. Like this is what I would do. Probably like um, like take a look at current structure of app and get more familiar. Seems like a good kind of first step definitely. too to see like where am I going to put these things? Um, and then yeah, just digging in and like the next step too, I'm going to go ahead and make this comment in the future. This would obviously just be you, but I think yeah, I did this time. Um, so the next thing will be like coordinating with Ali in this thread here. Let's see, Ali and Luca. Hi team. Cord I want to be nicer that you can coordinate here. Um, in this thread, you can be like, hey Ali, what days early this week are best for you to pair on things? And you'll schedule like some actual times where you can get together with her and pair program. Um, the way we usually recommend doing this is try really hard to have a PR up by like Wednesday or Thursday because the actual coding and problem solving on this issue will be such a small part of the whole cycle, right? Like you'll do the code, you'll get the PR up, but then after the PR is up, the other team needs time to go in and review the code. Once they've reviewed it and you've made the changes based on the feedback they've given you, then it'll go to a mentor for another round of feedback. And that, depending on people's schedules, can take quite a bit of time. So the sooner that you can get a PR up, the better we can roll into the weekend without the pressure of like, oh my God, I don't even have it up for review and it's already Saturday and it needs to be merged by Sunday. So we always like encourage really front loading the week with your pairing sessions because the rest of the week will be like review feedback cycles. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, I, I actually, I mean, I'm pretty sure like we will, uh, uh, after reading onboarding um, readme, um, I, I will understand this better, but, and also um, if we meet tomorrow, um, but just a quick question. So I'll yeah. be programming um, with my partner and then code reviews will be, um, so our other teams will participate in code reviews as well, right? Yes, it's okay, great question. And yeah, we can totally like dive really deep into this. Like we'll get on a call tomorrow or something. But yes, the way it works is you'll pair program with a different partner each week. So this week it's Allie, next week it'll be somebody else. Um, but you and Allie will work to make sure this issue gets solved. And then the other team will tag you into their PR for a code review. And you can like, I recommend doing that individually because it takes time, it takes focus, um, where you'll like pull down their work, pull down their branch and test out their feature and look at the code and leave comments, leave the code review. And then that kind of is like, yeah, more individualistic but your issue with Allie, you'll pair program with her to kind of solve that. And a lot of your time will be spent pair programming to solve it, but there will also probably be times where you need to work more asynchronously where you're like, okay, we pair programmed. I need you to take care of this part of the issue and I'll take care of this part. And you can be pushing it up to the same branch because you work on the same feature branch each week. Um, and it'll all just like come together async, but you'll work like as a pair to make sure that gets solved. Awesome, makes sense. And good. Thanks. Okay, and then Ali, since she like went through this all last week and stuff too, I'm sure we'll have tons of insight. But what I'll do is um, I have another meet cohort that I'm mentoring in about an hour. After that, I'll make sure I coordinate a time with you to kind of like go through the orientation. Um, hopefully tomorrow, if you're available. If not, Tuesday will be fine too. Um, yeah, I can do both. Coordinated. Oh, awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. then I will private message you, and we'll get it sorted out for a time too oriented sounds good sounds awesome all right anything else mm, yeah at this point i think i'll just dive in on github and kind of read it as much as awesome. i can to understand. yes we're like totally here for you too so like just share publicly in the channel there's like a wealth of knowledge at collab lab whether it's from you know your fellow participants or the mentors or other mentors or andrew 
So if you have questions about anything, just drop them in Slack um, and we'll, we'll be there for you. Thank you so much awesome. for joining us Sounds last good. minute. I know it like thank feels so weird much. probably. So, thank you <laughs> No, coming. thank you so much for having me. <laughs> of course, I'm so excited to have you and good luck this week. Here for you, I'll schedule something with you ASAP, okay? Awesome, thank you. All right, See ya. bye. Bye.